Hey everyone, welcome. Um, so today I'm going to talk about what the one thing that you're actually missing from your seven figure business plan. So um, I know that when you look at your business plan, you always think about um, what, what type of client you want, um, traffic, like whether or not you're gonna post on Instagram, TikTok, all of that. And then you also might think about like the different products and your services. But what a lot of people forget or don't include is your identity. What is your business identity? Because here's the thing, like how you um, are in your business or who you are to your clients is going to be different than who you are to your friends, your family, all of that. So you need to think about who you are to your clients. And when you do that, you can always pivot. You can always pivot because who you are it, within your business usually stays the same, no matter like the if your um, products or services, um, if your products or services end, uh, or change if you're if we lose access to a certain account whatever happens who you are stays the same and when I mean when I'm talking about who you are to your clients I'm talking about the di uh, different business identities the business archetypes so are you a guide are you a nurturer are you the BFF are you the older sibling? Are you the authoritator? Are you the person that is watching them? Like, who are you to your clients? Because that type of positioning, that makes it so much easier to attract the type of clients you want. So if you're not someone that likes to handhold your clients' hands, like if you are someone like that, then you are going to position yourself as um, a curator right so you'll recommend certain things to them and then they could take it from there so then the questions and the comments and the things that you get align with who you are and the reason why this is important is because this will override and limit um, any of the um, potential burnout essentially because if you think if you see yourself as a a curator or a best friend but your clients want you to hold their hand that's going to frustrate you and that's going to leave them with a bad taste in the mouth if they're not if you don't uphold that end of the bargain if they need hand holding then and they should not reach out to you as a curator if they need recommendations if they need guidance then that's where you come in so you have to look at your business identity, who you are in your business, because this is also what sets you apart from competition, even though competition doesn't really exist. This gives the person, because based on where your client is in their journey, they're going to need different types of people. So for me, I work with um, six and seven figure business owners. So I'm not the type of person that you can really message or DM or um, email asking for different things, my team handles that. So I, like my identity is a guide. So no one really expects me to hold their hands in that way because I'm taking you on a journey, for, but you're gonna do the work. You're going to do, you're gonna make the shifts happen. If you need an extra hand or push, I'm there but you are going to complete the shift, complete the transformation on your own because it's important to me that you that I don't take that transformation away from you. Because once you start your healing journey and you have all these um, shifts in your life, no one can take that away from you. All the inner work that you do, no matter what, no one can take that from you. So that so I would never take for me, it's important to me that I don't take that away from my clients. So I position myself as a guide 
and a healer. So on the path to you and, and your transformation, your path to self-actualization, if you fall, I'll help you, you know, I'll patch you up, but I'll still send you on your way. Like, <laughs> and if anything's necessary, if I do need to carry you, it's only going to be over the finish line. I'm not going to carry you to the finish line, but if you get, if you're this close to the finish line, I'll carry you over it. So, because you did all that work to get there. So that's how I see myself in business. And based on that identity, I created my services. And based on that identity, I created my products. So when anyone ever um, tries to position themselves as me, they're not me. I think I was on an interview and someone was like, we do the same thing. And I went kind of like Obama on them. I was like, we're nothing, we're nothing alike. Or like Naomi Campbell, I was like, we're nothing alike. They're like, oh. I was like, that's not you. Because in your business, you do this and you, you present yourself as this. And in my business, I do this and I present myself as that. So I'm not like you. We're not the same. And that's good because it makes it very clear to potential clients and customers who you are and how you will fit in their life and in their journey. So take, for example, you are a um, business coach or you are an astrologer. What type, are you the BFF astrologer? Like I believe there's an account on Twitter called Rude Astrology, right? Now they they are curators or they're, um, they're places where people can tap in entertainment, but would people, and they have merch, but would anyone really take the time to book with that account? To, sh to help them um, create a, their life path based on their astrology chart? No, you would select someone um, that is more nurturing um, or someone that's more intensive to create that for you. And then you would follow these accounts. So based on this particular instance, if you are posting content consistently you're always posting content, you're always posting videos, you're doing all this stuff, but you're not getting clients. You may be positioning yourself as just a curator. You not, you're not positioning yourself as the guide. You're not pos positioning yourself as the nurturer. You're not positioning yourself as the healer or the accelerator or the expander. So, Think about who you are in your business and who you are to your clients or who you want to be to your clients. And then from there, that's when you start to create content. That's when you start to, you know, tailor your products and services to this business identity. Because a lot of people always think about their, their clients. And then if, if you struggle to figure out who you are in your business, um, we're going to go over the process this weekend in Flip the Switch weekend. So we're going to go over the process of who you are in your business. And we go over certain um, certain questions. So my client, the people that join will be able to easily identify who they are. And I also have some people that um, that are real estate agents, that are sales professionals, and that are traders. So they don't have businesses, but they have like book of businesses or they have investments. So the same thing would apply. What type of trader are you? What type of salesperson are you? What type of realtor are you? Because it, then it's easier to embody that energy. You're able to act in alignment and that's how you become the center of your universe because once you align with who you are within this this particular realm then everything will align and orbit around you so if you trade and you are very you you are bull in the china shop trader or you are calm and collected trader or you are more scientific mathematical all of that you kind of think about that if you're a realtor are you a curator or do you create experiences are you more nurturing to your clients the same thing applies 
If you're a salesperson, are you sitting on the same side of the table with your client or are you sitting on the other side? Are you guiding them through the process? Are you transactional or are you, are you consultative? All of that you should be thinking about who you are in this particular realm, whether the realm is your job, it's your investments, or it's your business. And this also applies to relationships, but let's talk about the relationship with money. So when you think about who you are in your business, if you are the guide, then you easily accept money. If you, And then that also reflects how much money people will pay you to be their guide? How much money will people pay you to be their curator? How much money will people pay you to be their nurturer? How much money will people pay you to be their healer? So when you identify who you are in business, within your business in this realm, everything else falls into place. So you think about, so now when you think about how much people will pay you to be this particular identity for them or to them, then you think about how will I guide people? How will I nurture people? How, how will I heal people? How will, how will I make the curation process more exciting? So you start to look at the things that you do in your business, the prices you charge, and the services and products that you offer based on this identity. And so we see people, like if you're an influencer, right, on TikTok, your account also is your realm. Is your account for entertainment? But what type of entertainer are you? Are you entertaining people to, to laugh? Are you entertaining them to think? Are you informing them? What type, of, what type of person are you? What type of account is this? And so that also dictates like how you show up in your video. So you don't have to show up like dancing. Like you could just show up like this and chill. Since I am a guide and a healer, I'm gonna show up as this. And then it also helps me to um, think about the type of content I interact with. If I'm a healer and a guide, um, I'm not really going to pop off as much like as much as I like. Like I'll pop off during certain things, but I'm not going to be popping off every day. Like I have to really kind of think about what I want to be to my to my clients because my clients come first. How I'm how I'm perceived to others, like my audience comes second. Because I will always think about who my clients, who I am to my clients in my business. And so and then also this particular identity, does it align with who you really are? Is it a lot of work? So if, you're, if you feel like at the end of the day when you log off, you did so much, or you feel like after sessions or after anything, you feel drained. Your business identity or this particular identity, your work identity, doesn't really align with who you are. So you need to think about that as well. Are you fronting? So if you feel like you're fronting, then then either you need to align your personal life or who you are with your business, how you see your business going, or you need to align your business life with who you are. When I first started my practice, I was visiting my parents and I literally had an argument with my mother and then I had to hop on a session. When I hopped on the session, I said, can we please reschedule? Because my energy was, a, was shit, it was complete crap. Like I, I just had an argument with someone and I'm gonna hop on here and help you with your anxiety. <laughs> like I'm enraged, like that energy is wrong. So I, so I knew that I needed to change how I was walking around outside of the Zoom, outside of my Zoom sessions. I needed to really start aligning myself with my identity as a guide and a healer. So I started to do that. And my life started to be a lot easier because there was congruency. And so when there's this energetic congruency, you life just becomes so much easier. Your business, your life, everything, your work 
whatever, it doesn't have to become such a headache because you have this congruency. And if your business identity right now isn't doesn't align, once you make this shift, you're gonna see so much easier to run your business. And then you're also gonna give yourself permission to let certain products and services go because they don't align with with who you are. If you are not someone that wants to hold people's hands, then you should shift into curator mode or you should um, shift into expander mode. So it's like when you do that, um, that is when it becomes so much easier to hit seven figures because you've identified, you aligned your identity, you aligned your product and services, and you confirmed your client base, right? And you confirmed your pricing. So when you do this, then you can look within your business and see what where gaps need to be filled. So that's how you build your team. That's how you build your support system. And so once you have your support system, then you can easily scale. I never recommend to any of my clients that are currently at six figures, if they want to scale to seven, I say you have to hire a team. Because that would be wild if you're like the only people that I've seen that hit seven figures without a team, they either ended up in the hospital or they're, they had a, a breakdown. So you never want to put your health last when it comes to running your business because your health, make a healthy you equals a healthy business. You have to remember that. So anytime you want to um, pull an all nighter, anytime you want to do all those things, stop go to sleep, eat, the work will always be there, but you won't, right? So with, with this scaling to seven figures, it starts, it starts at the top with you. And then when you think about who you are in your business, as a guide and a healer, I have to be an example. So I'm always going to take care of myself. So I show that to my clients. During my sessions, I can e easily say to my clients, this is exactly what I did and you should do it too, as a guide. Like I will never not practice what I preach. And so that congruency, they feel that. And that energy of congruency is why they get transformations because I never tell them to do something I wouldn't do myself and I wouldn't suggest they try something that hasn't worked for me or other clients. So look at your, look at your business. Um, yesterday, I believe I shared something I saw on the Shrink Chicks um, Instagram account. They said, be careful who you listen to because a lot of people are still trying to teach you what, from their wounds versus their healing. So someone could easily be in the process of healing, but they're still trying to teach you or tell you to do certain things from their wounds. And that type of advice isn't going to help you. You want to take advice from someone that has done it, has um, pretty much has um, healed from that situation. Like, yes, you want to you want to talk to someone or you want to learn from someone that has experience with the issues you do. But it's really, really important if you are tapping into this person as a guide or a healer that they've done most of it. So most of this stuff that um, I share, I do myself. And if anything you take from this series in terms of your business, I want you to take this. Look at who you are, your business identity. Because once you do that, everything else will fall into place. The questions on pricing, the questions on your services, the questions on your branding, the questions on your clients, the questions on team, team people you should hire, all of that is answered by you and who you are in your business. All right, and so that is it for um, today's live. It was pretty short and no, no slides this time because I really wanted to speak from the heart because I, I know that running a business can be really stressful. So taking stock and to do it for tonight, if you've been on track and watching everything, um, or if you're binge watching now, like taking time now to reflect on everything that you've learned so far in this series, this is day eight in the series. 
So watching the other videos and all the information that I shared and thinking about who you are in your business now or who you want to be will make it easier. And if you are not who you are in your business, thinking about who you want to be um, will help you kind of see the next steps. Like what do you need to hire a mentor? Do you need to, to join a program? Do you need to do any of those things? Like in, for this weekend, if you want to join us, you could click the link in you could click the link in my bio to join us and then we'll go through the process with you so you can see where you are now and where you want to be and the steps that you should take to get there. I try to simplify the process. I don't I don't believe that business should be hard. I think business should be simple. Um, life is what's complicated and your business should be something that supports you in your life not the other way around. You should not throw your life into your business. Your business should be supporting you and your life. Um, and that's it, that's it for today. It was a little preachy, but hope, hopefully you received it. Um, do we have any questions? I'm paying attention now. I tried to not pay attention so I don't get um, distracted, but I'm paying attention now if you have any questions for me. Oh, you're so welcome. You're welcome. I'm happy to share. Any questions on TikTok? Instagram? No? All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'll be going live again tomorrow around 6-ish. And if you missed any of the previous videos, just click. Oh, if you missed it, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, tomorrow, this will be available, this, this replay and you can catch up with the other videos by clicking the link in my bio. It's called the Financial Consciousness Series. So it's a playlist on YouTube. Um, you can um, watch all the videos, relax, you know, don't worry. You didn't um, miss anything. You're, you're right on time. So now you can binge watch the others and catch up to this one. You're so welcome. All right, everyone, have a good evening.